Good morning. Welcome to the Avenue G Church of Christ here in Temple, Texas, our Sunday school. Today's, uh, this week's lesson is the Macedonian call, and it deals with Acts, the chapter 16, and verses 1 through 15. Some of the things that we're going to be discussing, uh, we're going to talk about who Paul meets in this chapter. We're going to talk about why Timothy was circumcised. And then we're going to say the other disciples that met up with Paul while they were on his journey. And that's Silas and Timothy. Why there was no synagogue in Philippi family of Timothy, and who was it that was baptized during this lesson? The verses chosen for the lesson, are, and we did two of them. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. The other verses that we chose was from 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verses 19 and 20. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more. And to the Jews I became Jew, that I might win Jews, to those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. Before we go into our lesson, I'd like for you to join me in prayer. Oh God, we give thanks to you, Father, for making available salvation to us, your children. God, do not rebuke us in your anger, nor be displeased with us because of things we may do or say. We feel your wrath when we are wrong and, and you're upset. We are drowning in our iniquities and it just seems too heavy for us to bear. But we know that you can ease this burden if we are just obedient like we should be. We are foolish for not being steadfast in your word and because of this we mourn, Father, all the day long. We are feeble, foolish, we are foolish, we are feeble, ah, I have to start this over. You come with us and join us in prayer. Oh God, Father of us all, we thank you for making salvation available to us, your children. And God, we ask that you do not rebuke us in your anger, nor be displeased with us because of things we may do or say. We feel your wrath when we are wrong and you're upset. We're drowning in our iniquities and they seem too heavy for us to bear. But Father, we know you can ease this burden, if we just be the obedient children that we should be. We are foolish for not being steadfast in your word, and because of this we mourn all the day long. Father, we're, we're, we stumble because we do not listen. Father, all our desires we lay before you, while we ask for forgiveness. Father, our friend, leave us, our families, turn their back on us, but we know that you will never forsake us. We know that in, in you is all the health, strength, and power we need to make it through this time we live in. Others may render evil for evil, but we, Father, will walk down the path of righteousness. Make haste to help us, Father, and let us forever look to the hill from which cometh our health. Be with us, shield us from the adversary, and let us be 
ever mindful that you are our God and Father of us all. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. In the name of your Son, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Now, you know, we ended our last lesson on Acts 14, when Paul was and Barnabas were on their way back to uh, Lystra. And we're starting this one in Acts 16, so we, we, we missed out on Acts 15, and I think we need to discuss some of the things that happened in Acts 15. Paul and Barnabas are in Antioch of Syria. You know, they had left. They had went and started their journey in Antioch and Pisidia, but now they were back where they started from. Well, while they were there, they came down from Judea, some Jews who were Christian. You know, at first they came down and said how they were happy that the uh, Gentiles had become Christians, but they told them, hey, this wasn't enough. There was something else that needed to be done, and that is that they needed to be circumcised and they needed to follow the law of Moses. And after hearing this, Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others uh, decided that they would go to Jerusalem and they were going to question the elders and apostles there and find out what they had to say about this situation. And when they went there, they made a report and told them, hey, all the things they had done and what God had done with the uh, uh, Gentiles and how he had uh, uh, gave them the Holy Spirit like he did the Jews. But there were some Pharisees there who were also Christians, and they said to them the same thing that the other men had said, that, hey, Gentiles need to be circumcised, and they needed to follow the law. Well, after they had talked for a while and disputed, Peter stood up. And he, you know, that's when he gave his well-known uh, speech about how God had given him the power to uh, preach to the Gentiles and, and told him how the Gentiles had, uh, how, the, how the God had uh, gave the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles just as he did the Jews. And when he got through talking, James got up. James came up with a decree for the Gentiles. And a decree is no more than an official order issued by some legal authority. And what he told them was they did, that they needed to abstain from things that were strangled, from things that were James told them that they should abstain from things offered to idols, from, from blood, from things that were strangled, and from sexual immorality. And he said, if you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. So now, we, Paul and Barnabas returned to Antioch but they took along with them Judas and Silas. And uh, they took them along because they were going to allow those who were up in uh, Antioch, those Gentiles at that church, as proof that what, what, what they were going to tell them was true. And he told the Gentiles that uh, what the decree was and that they didn't have to be circumcised or follow the law, and they were happy. While he was there, while they were there back in Antioch, Paul and Barnabas decided to revisit the churches that they had set up. 
And there, they had a dispute about John Mark because Barnabas wanted to take John Mark back with them. And Paul didn't want to take him because he had left them on their first missionary journey. And because of this, they split up. It was, uh, I don't know how angry they were, but they were angry enough that they uh, did not go with each other. They went their own ways. Paul went with Silas and Barnabas went with John Mark and they separated and began their journeys again. Now this is when they left. Barnabas took Mark and he went back to Cyprus and Paul, he, he and Silas and one other left and they started out for Tarsus. And that brings us right back, or that brings us right to where we are now at 16 in verses number one. And I'm going to read all these verses, verses 1 through 15. Then he came to De Derby in Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed. But his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep, which were determined by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in faith and increased in number daily. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach to the word, to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So, passing by Mysia, they came to they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and, pleased and pleaded with him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Therefore, Sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city of that part of Macedonia, a colony, and we were staying in that city for some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. Now let's look at our, end of our verses individually. Now 16, one and two said, then he came to Derby and Lystra and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was a Greek. 
he was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Derby and Lystra. Now Paul was going to return to, to these cities. And that remember in, in, in Lystra, he was stoned. But before they left, what they did do, they picked up a uh, a young man by the name of T Timothy. After the dispute, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, son of a certain Jewish woman. And let's look at this map. Now, Paul, Silas, and Timothy left Antioch and went to Tarsus, and from Tarsus, they went to Lystra. Now you need to remember they took a, uh, Timothy with them, and Timothy was the son of a certain Jewish woman. And you know, I never could remember his uh, mother and uh, grandmother's name, but I've come to the point where I remember now. Now his mother's name was Eunice, and his grandmother's name was Lois, and they brought him up teaching him about God. Now, his father was a Greek, and he wasn't circumcised. Now, if his father was a Greek, he wouldn't circumcise his son. So I'm trying to figure out, why did they, they pick him? Why did they pick Timothy? because Timothy was well spoken of by the brethren. You know, he, he was a Christian. He was taught by his mother and grandmother, and he was known to be a good man, not only in Lystria, but they also spoke highly of him in Iconium. Let's look at verse three. Paul wanted to have him go on with him. And he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region. For they all knew that his father was a Greek. Okay, he took him and circumcised him. That made me think a little while, you know. Was Paul being a hypocrite? I mean, you know, he had just left a while back from uh, uh, Jerusalem and found out that they, they that the uh, Gentiles didn't need to be circumcised. So why did Paul circumcise Timothy? You know, was it really necessary to circumcise? Well, we know it wasn't. You know, he didn't have to circumcise him. But if he did not circumcise him, and Paul took him along with him, and where did Paul always go first. He always went to the Jews. He went to the synagogue. Well, an uncircumcised or Gentile would not be allowed in the synagogue. This was a matter of expedience. Because, you know, during the same time, it was about to say, if you read in Galatians, the same time there was a, a Greek by the name of Titus. And he, he didn't circumcise Titus. He refused to circumcise Titus. Okay, I mentioned Paul always went to the Jews first. Oh, and I just mentioned here, he had uh, uh, refused to circumcise Titus in Galatians 2. And the reason he didn't circumcise Titus because uh, even though it wasn't necessary, it was not a means of expedient because Titus had no Jewish connection. And if you read 1 Corinthians 9.20, it tells you that Paul said when I became a, he became a Jew to be with the Jew, and when he came to be, he, he, he would be whatever he needed to be so that he would gain, be able to gain more people, to, to influence more people to become Christians. Verse 4, 
And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep, which were determined by the apostles and the elders at Jerusalem. The decree, the rules that they wanted Gentiles to follow. And when the Gentiles heard this, they, hey, they were elated. They were very happy knowing to, they know, to know that they didn't have to follow these rules satisfied them very much. And you know what? These rules were just temporary. Because you, if you go to 1 Timothy 4, you can read where, the, where it says that all things are good to eat as long as you give thanks for them. And one thing about this, oh, I'm going to bring it up a little bit later. Verse number five. So the churches were strengthened in faith and increased in the number daily. Increased in number daily. Gentiles realizing that they didn't have to follow any ceremonial laws. They didn't have to be circumcised. They didn't have to keep Sabbaths. And what else? They increased in their number. More Gentiles were willing to become Christians. But you know what? Today, Judaizers are still in business. They are today, they're not, maybe they're not talking about being circumcised, but they are talking about other things that they want to do, considering and obeying the law. Because they're, they attempt to bind Sabbath observers on Christians, you know, Saturday is a Sabbath day bringing instrumental music into worship and trying to say it was David, but they rebuked David for doing it. Trying to devise daily sacrifices, ordaining a priesthood separate from the laity, lighting sacred candles, the requirement of certain periods of official formal fast. We don't have to fast unless you want to. Imposing diet restrictions, you can only eat certain things. Now, verse six says, now when they had gone through Phrygia in the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Okay, they left Phrygia. Okay, they left Lystra and made their way through Phrygia. And then, of course, they, are, they went on to Troas, but we'll, we'll get into that in a, in a minute. Okay, Phrygia and Galatia, they went through that. It's believed that Paul got sick uh, during this time. And if they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. I want to show you something just for a minute. Back to that map again. Okay, you know, I know it's going to come up later. They're going to talk about uh, how they were refused. Uh, they weren't supposed to allow in Asia. But Asia wasn't the continent of Asia. Asia was a, a providence down here. This is, this is the Asia that they were talking about that they weren't supposed to go through. I think, and that's where most of the, the, the if you remember, the seven churches, Smyrna, Ephesus, uh, Laodicea, that's where some of those churches were, Saudi. And they were, they were told not to go there. The Holy Spirit had forbidden them to preach the word in Asia. And I just mentioned, not the continent of Asia, but that, that little uh, province that I showed you on the map, that part of Asia, that's where they were not allowed to go. You know, but Paul wanted to go to those places. If you read Isaiah 55, it'll tell you about that. And one thing in particular, you know, how did Paul receive this information? They didn't say how the Holy Spirit had told him. They didn't say uh, exactly how it had happened, but he had received the word that he wasn't supposed to go. 
but did he have a dream? Did he, did he have a vision or did he have a, vi a visit from some kind of prophet? Because if you read in Galatians again, you will see that there was a prophet by the name of Agabus who they had, they had come in contact with while they were on this journey. But we don't read about it here in Acts. The Bible does not say how he received this information. Okay, Acts uh, 16, verses 7 and 8. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas, came to Mysia. And I, I can show you where Mysia uh, was uh, real shortly, and, uh, and they went to Troas. And lit. okay, here's Mysia. They went by. They didn't go through Mysia. They went by and round about, and then they went to Troas, right here. Okay, they went around Mysia. But what, what, you know, Paul had thought he wanted he wanted to go to Bithynia, but then the Holy Spirit had forbade him to go there. You know why 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 couldn't they go to Asia? Didn't the Asians need need the gospel? For what reason did God not allow them, or why did the Holy Spirit tell them that they uh, could not go to Asia? probably because the time wasn't right for them to hear the gospel and there were some right people to hear it somewhere else. Anyway, they went to Troas. The ninth and the tenth chapter reads, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. A vision appeared to Paul. This time we are told how he got the idea. A vision had appeared to Paul. God spoke to him through a vision. But Paul made the decision to go. He was not commanded. He made it upon himself. He took it upon himself and chose to go to Macedonia. He wasn't commanded to go. And then again, you would think, why would they go back to the places that they had just came from visiting? Immediately, after they had got that vision, they sought, or Paul had that vision, I guess he had talked among them and told them about it, or maybe they all saw it, I don't know. But they all wanted to go to Macedonia. Oh, what's strange about what's said here. You know, it says, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia. The word we tells us that now the person who is writing this is a part of the group. And that was Luke. Luke is saying that now he's involved with them now. And he met up with them, I guess, in Troas. Concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Again, Luke includes himself. Called us, not called them or called Paul, but called us. And, you know, and there's something about Luke. Luke, Luke was an evangelist. See, they said he, they, we go, we're going to preach. So he, he must, he, have, he was an evangelist also, and he also was a physician. So now we got Paul, we have Silas, we have Timothy, and we have Luke, and they're leaving Troas and on their way to Macedonia. 
verses 11 and 12. Therefore, sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were staying in that city for some days. They sailed from Som from Troas to Samothrace. Okay, let's look at that map, see where that is. Okay, here they are in Troas. They left Troas, went to Samothrace, and from Samothrace, they went to Neapolis, and then on to Philippi. Okay, I got a little bit ahead and told you a little bit more, but then, you know, they left Troas and they went to Samothrace. They stayed in Samothrace overnight and left the next day. They didn't, they didn't really do anything in Samothrace for far, at least they don't, they don't uh, say anything about them. Paul did not preach, uh, far as I know, well, we don't know if anybody else preached, but we do know that later on they became, there was a church in Samothrace, so maybe someone else did preach. Journey took one day with good winds to Neapolis, oh, to in, all right, yeah, in to ne Neapolis, as if they had good winds. If they didn't, it would take longer. Now, Neapolis means a new town. And you know, what's, what's meant? What's meant is really it was the first town that they came to, because it was nothing new about uh, Neapolis, it had been there. And then from Neapolis, they went to Philippi. And Philippi was a Roman colony, you know, and that means something. That means there's a few things, you know. If they were a Roman colony, that means that those people in there would, could be Roman citizens. You mean that means that they had roads or they had fortification, you know, they had several privileges. They had the privileges of a Roman citizen. You know, they stayed there for a couple of days. And it, why did they, what were they doing there, staying there for a couple of days? Why didn't they, I, I didn't, well, I didn't understand until you read on why they stayed there for a few days and, and didn't really do anything. Okay, let's read uh, uh, verse 13. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Sabbath day went out of the city. Is that strange? Is that unusual? Where did they usually go on the Sabbath day? Hey, they usually went to a synagogue. There was no synagogue. And if there was no synagogue, that means that there were less than 10 Jews in that city. So not having a synagogue, they went to where those people worshiped the one God, because they wouldn't go to where people worship uh, several gods or, or worship idols. So they must have heard and where they worship and when they worship, and they went there. But you know, if they believe in the one God, they would not, they would understand that the Sabbath day was the day they were supposed to worship. Remember, they weren't Christians. And who was there? A group of women. Doesn't say anything about any men. It doesn't say anything about any children. It just says a group of women. And you know, that makes sense that there wasn't any Jews or it wasn't, there were very few uh, Jews there. It didn't say anything about them being Jews either, just that they worship the one God. You know, because the Jews were banished from Rome. And now you're in, in uh, Philippi, and Philippi is a colony. There's no Jews allowed in Roman colonies either. So there we have less, we know there was less than 10 men. It could have been one or two, we don't know how many, it doesn't say. But today, this Saturday, there were a group of women there to worship the 
the one God. Verse 14, now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. Lydia, a worshiper of the true God. You know what she did? She sold purple dye. And this dye was very expensive. And the reason why it was so expensive because it, it was made from shellfish and it took thousands upon thousands of, of shellfish to make, I think, maybe one ounce of this dye. And that's why it was so expensive. And you know, the only one who used to wear this purple were those who were of royalty. Thyatira, that's where she was from. She was from Thyatira. And, and you know, Thyatira was in Asia. And that, you know, and what's strange about that, they were forbidden to preach in Asia, but now they're gonna to preach to a person who's from Asia. She was one who worshiped the one true God. And then they said that her heart was opened by the gospel. Now, when they're saying it was opened by the gospel, you know, when some people say, I mean, some verses say God opens her heart. Well, God did open her heart, but he didn't act directly upon her. The way her heart was opened, he did it by the use of the gospel. The influence that was made upon her was strictly by the gospel that came from God. Yep. Verse 15. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. You know, one thing is you always read that new converts are baptized, and I don't know why so many people have so much against baptism. But in the Bible, when someone someone was, was converted to Christianity, he was baptized or she was baptized. And they said, and her household. Mm. Now, this brings up a question. Again, you know, her household, what, were there children? Well, hey, it doesn't say anywhere that any children were present. All it says was that uh, they spoke to the women that met there, and that was it. Nothing about any children. But people will make it seem like, oh, well, this is our household, it had to be children. That's conjecture on their part. Now, Lydia asked them to stay. <laughs> Seemed like she was begging. <laughs> In fact, it did say she begged. <laughs> but you know, in, in some verses, the different versions, you, you'll see it says, it doesn't say beg. It's, but Paul could not refuse because of the way she did it. I mean, you know, hey, it's almost like that. If, I'm not, if I'm not faithful, you leave. But if you're faithful, you stay. But Paul stayed, but he didn't stay for a long while, but he did stay. And that's where our lesson ends. We're talking about these group of people, how God works. Even though sometimes we want to do things, that's not the way God wants it to be done. And sometimes we have to become like other people so that they know that we're on the same level as they are to teach them we're not high and mighty. We're just some men and women just like everybody else. Let me read these applications. Paul's habit of working with and, and encouraging others to preach the gospel provides a model for us to follow today. If the Great Commission is to be fulfilled, we must constantly train and prepare individuals to do so. Although Silas was already a capable member of his team, Paul selected Timothy to join their efforts. Luke was also welcomed on board. This is the idea Paul expressed to Timothy when he wrote, 
and the things that you may have learned from me among my many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Second Timothy 2 verse 2. Like Paul, we must learn to take advantage of the opportunities we encounter. He did not become discouraged when his plans to preach in either Asia or Bithynia did not materialize. Paul wanted to preach there, but God said this time, you know, this is not the right time. Instead, he faithfully followed the Lord's lead and preached where he was given the opportunity. Let us not become discouraged if life doesn't turn out as we imagine. Let us do the best we can to preach Christ Jesus wherever we are. We've got a couple of questions we're going to go through, and uh, you, you should already know the answer to these. The first one is, what young man did Paul meet in Lystra? Paul met, and that's Acts 16 and 1, and that was Timothy. And you got to remember, Timothy was supposedly at the Lystra when Paul got stoned and he thought he was dead and those Christians was around him. It's believed that Timothy was one of those Christians. Number two, what did Paul do to this young man at 16.3? Well, we all know what he did to uh, Timothy. That should be well known among all. He circumcised him. What did Paul's team deliver to the churches in Galatia? Paul delivered the decree, the rules that he had to follow, the instructions that were needed. Verse uh, Question four, where were the missionaries forbidden to preach? They were forbidden to preach in Asia. <clears throat> Where was the team directed to go? Acts 16, verses 9 and 10. Into Macedonia. Oh. Question number six. Who joined Paul's team in Troas? Ah, I remember they said, when they said we, that means that the speaker who was writing this was included in that uh, company. And that was Luke. We all know that the book of Acts was written by Luke. And you know, this, I didn't mention this, but this time period is 80, anywhere from AD 46 to AD 50. And that's why when they mentioned about uh, Galatia, this happened around the same time. This happened the same time. Where did Paul meet Lydia? By the riverside. Why did he have to meet her by the riverside? Because they had, you know, Paul usually went, the first place they would always go was to the Jews, and the Jews would always meet in the synagogue, and there was no synagogue, so they had to go to the riverside. And the last question, what did Lydia do in response to Paul's preaching? Now, when I looked at this, there were actually two things that she did. Of course, the first thing that she did, hey, she got baptized. The other thing that you could have put down is that, hey, she also begged uh, Paul to stay with him if he felt that she was worthy. And he did. And that's the end of our lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. May God bless you and be with you and keep you and your family safe. Thank you. <laughs>